with us today because we had anticipated a little bit of rain. Instead, we got a lot of sunshine. Uh, and a lot of sunshine in many, many ways. And today I welcome you and I'm extremely proud um, to stand here before you uh, with the backing of 19 legislators, the county executive, all right, and some of the most prominent members of the Jewish community here in Nassau County. So it is a good day uh, for all of us. Uh, we're here today to take a stand uh, against the divisive BDS movement. Today, the Nassau County Legislature is voting on legislation that will disqualify any company or individual from doing business with the Nassau County if they are involved in any BDS activities. The BDS movement, whether well intended or not, is damaging on so many lives. I now hand uh, the microphone to my colleague, and I actually the, the initiator of the, of the effort that we are here today uh, to uh, explain to you, uh, legislator, alternate deputy uh, 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 legislator, Howard Capel. And we will now give you an, uh, an introduction to all who are here today, and of course, a little bit about the movement. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer, and I thank you for allowing me to uh, take the lead on this uh, legislation, which is in fact supported by uh, by all of uh, all of the members of the legislature, uh, strongly supported. Uh, I just want to, before I start, uh, by the way, I hope you're all wearing sunscreen. Is and I'm not. I always forget. Uh, but in any event, I want to recognize just a, uh, a few of the people who are who are here with us this morning. Uh, first of all, we've got many members of the legislature, and uh, we've also got an attendance. Uh, and I'm not going to go through each member of the legislature because we know who they are. We've got uh, Rabbi Klein uh, of the Merrick Jewish Center. We've got Rabbi Pearl of the uh, Chabad of Mediola. Uh, we've got. Rabbi Androphy of the East Meadow Jewish Center. Rabbi Bruce Ginsburg is here. Uh, Avi, we've got uh, we've got a few people, a uh, few young students who are who are here with us as well, uh, and they're uh, they're members of the uh, the students at the Rambam School in uh, in the Five Towns. It's uh, Noam. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I've got the I've got Avi Orlo. Joseph Silverstein and Noah Schwartz. Uh, now we've got Robert Sokoloff, who's director of the uh, of the American Jewish Committee in Long Island region. Uh, Kenneth Greenberg, who's the president of the American Jewish uh, Committee in Long Island region. We've got uh, Assemblyman uh, Hempstead Assemblyman Bruce Blakeman, uh, my friend, who's here as well. Uh, and Andy Bader of the Plainview Jewish Center. Thank you, Judy. All right, uh, I'm sure I've left some people out, and uh, I hope not, but uh, I, I do apologize. Uh, everybody certainly is, is welcome and, and appreciated. Just over two years ago, the company that many of you have heard of, it's called SodaStream, uh, they laid off the last worker in a factory, in a large factory uh, in what's called the West Bank, in an industrial zone. It's an area which has very, very high unemployment. Now, this factory had employed about 1,300 workers, of whom 950 were local Arab workers, uh, almost all of whom had previously not had employment. In this factory, there was full equality of pay and of opportunity, and the factory and all of its jobs were moved, were moved to a location within Israel proper. Once this happened, most of these people lost their jobs because they just could not go there uh, due to political conditions. Now, this was a claimed success of the so-called Boycott Divestment Sanctions Movement, or, or BDS. That movement seeks to apply pressure uh, on the Israeli government uh, for some political results. 
BDS movement claimed this as a tremendous success, and they felt very gratified. The local workers, not so much. Now, BDS is, is a, an international movement, and they've had some tractions, unfortunately, but we need to understand what BDS really is. Many people think that it's aimed at restoring the status quo ante, or the pre-1967 lines, uh, before the 1967 war between Israel and, uh, and Jordan on one side, and Egypt on the other, and Syria. But that's not really so. According to its own statements, it is actually aimed at the complete delegitimization, de de I got it out, and ultimate destruction of the state of Israel. BDS has, as one of its founding principles, one of its goals is the so-called right of return. Now, the right of return aims to flood Israel with millions of Arabs who claim to have been uh, citizens of, the, of Israel proper prior to 1948. That's going back a long way. And this, as anyone who studied the issues at all will understand, is code for destruction of the state of Israel by turning it into simply another Arab majority state. Uh, even if it's still called Israel, but it would no longer be Israel. It would no longer be a Jewish state. BDS is a very thin and transparent veneer of respectability, of respectable political uh, goals, but it's layered on a rock-solid foundation of anti-Israel and unfortunately anti-Semitic uh, sentiment. Now, we don't mean to suggest that every single adherent of BDS is an anti-Semite because that's clearly not the case. Uh, many, are, many, if not most, are well-intentioned people, but the leaders clearly are uh, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic. Many followers are simply misled. They don't really study it. They sign on to slogans. Uh, many of them are gullible, as college students will be. We were all college students. We remember what it was like back then. However, we're all adults here. We in Nassau County are not so easily misled. And we're going to ignore the blatant appeals to ancient hatreds which are espoused by BDS leaders. And perhaps of all these, most cruel of all is the comparison of Israel to the Nazis. And as everyone knows, that is the movement that destroyed uh, a significant and almost the majority of Jewish people in the entire world. Not so long ago, within the living memory of many people. Now, I and others here can easily and happily spend hours confidently debunking all of the propaganda uh, aimed, at the state, uh, aimed at the destruction of the state of Israel, and I'm available to do so. Just call my office and I'm there. Uh, we'll do it. We can explore the topic, but that's not. There's not time for that now, and that's not why we're here today. Today, I'm speaking not merely as as a concerned Jew, but I'm speaking as one of 19 freely, freely elected members of the Nassau County Legislature, who collectively represent 1.4 million citizens here in the County of Nassau. And what we're doing today is, with one voice, we're standing up and we're saying out loud, we're not going to be a party to false propaganda, we're not going to be intimidated. We're not going to give in to the purveyors of hate, and we're going to do the right thing. Now, why are we doing this? Because boycotts have consequences. And it's not only consequences which are aimed at the state of Israel, they have local consequences. Nassau County spends a lot of money. And we have gone through lots of procedures and discussions, we'll call it politely discussions, as to whether we're doing it sufficiently well. Uh, but we can all agree that, that we want to buy things in an efficient way, at the lowest cost fashion, and in a way that provides us with the best products and services. When you exclude people, 
you're hurting that goal. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Now, we don't mean to suggest that a boycott is never warranted. Of course, uh, everyone can agree that uh, you don't want to buy products of slave labor or, or you, don't want, you don't want to buy stolen property, and there are many such examples, and all of us can come up with examples, but clearly that's not what we're talking about over here today. The legislation that we're announcing today is simply to the effect that Nassau County is <clears throat> me, no longer not, not going to deal with people who give in to the threats and lies of BDS. Now let's be clear, the proposed legislation, and we've had some discussion on this, does not in any way prohibit or seek to inhibit any person's right of free expression. Excuse me. <coughs> Allergies. Any person can express whatever they want, whether it's prejudiced or, or, or otherwise, and we're all the first, among the first to, to defend that right, but we will not be party to any actions that violate our principles. Now, uh, as, as uh, the presiding officer mentioned, I'm very grateful and very proud that all 19 of us have signed on to this, which speaks to very fine character and determination of all my colleagues and friends on the Minnesota legislature, and we're all going to resist this bigoted uh, action, and for that matter, action, bigoted action of any description. Finally, we're not going to pretend that this legislation in and of itself is going to change the world or eliminate uh, discrimination or anything like that. It's rather meant as a statement. It's a statement of, of what we believe. It's a statement of morality. And it's meant as a challenge. And it's a challenge to other people, other businesses, other governments to join us. Do the same as we're doing. And if we all act together, we're going to resist the pernicious, the nasty, the, the vicious movement known as BDS. And now, uh, I'm going to introduce Yes. Okay. We're first going to introduce the county. We've got a few speakers, but uh, obviously the most prominent among them, and I'm happy to introduce our county executive, Ed Mangano. Thank you. Let's hear it for Howard. Howard Compel. Howard, uh, we appreciate your leadership on this issue, and collectively we're here in very much a non-partisan way. It'll be my honor to sign this law into sign this legislation into law. We collectively and clearly do not support BDS acts against Israel. I want to thank all of our community leaders that join us here today, certainly our rabbis, our students, uh, all of our legislators. Councilman uh, Bruce Blakeman joins us here as well to make this statement. And we will functionally here in the county add this affirmation to our disclosure and the companies will have to affirm that they are not participating in BDS activity and that will likely be about 30 days after the law is passed to functionally send out the notices and have uh, the forms amended so that we all know before we move forward with the contract exactly what acts are being committed or not committed in this case in order to do business with our county. So once again, I thank Howard for his leadership. I thank all the legislators for collectively coming together to pass this legislation in a unanimous fashion. I will sign it into law and it will become the law here in Nassau County very soon. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to call my good friend, Legislator Judy Jacobs. Thank you, Howard. I appreciate it. Um, I fully support this local law, which will prohibit discriminatory, anti-competitive business practices in Nassau County. Israel is and always has been a wonderfully steadfast ally of the United States of America, and we must do everything we can to disallow any boycott, divest sanctions, and activities. I mean, this almost seems like a no-brainer. This seems like something we shouldn't have to say. 
but it's so important that we do have to say it because I think that uh, uh, Mr. Coppell, Legislator Coppell, gave an excellent synopsis of what BDS is all about. And if we don't say anything, there's a great shame in silence. Nazi Germany grew, and you, we all know what the result was, by people not saying what should be said. So we are taking a very firm stand, and I, I am here to tell you that the Democrats of the Nassau County Legislature are in full support of this also. And I'm sure if we're all vigilant, we will make certain that Israel is protected and that we don't participate in any kind of discrimination at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I mentioned the names of several students before from uh, the Rambam School in the Five Towns. Uh, it's now my pleasure to call on the principal of that school, uh, it's Rabbi Zev Friedman. Thank you. I'll ask the boys to stand by my side because these guys are the future of our country, the future leaders of our country. And uh, as an educator, I am uh, proud to say we're going to bring the whole school down to the actual session to show support and teach the boys an important lesson in, in civics. Uh, so I think it's important that our future hears the challenges that they face, that democracy faces, because the challenges to Israel are challenges to the United States and our way of life. Uh, of course, special thanks to the legislators that are here, uh, the presiding officer, Norma Gonzalez, and uh, legislator Capel, and uh, all those that you know made today's uh, you know get together possible. I just want to share that uh, the idea of BDS, to my mind, is really based on three things. A B, which is really blackmail, a D, which is dishonesty, and S, which is silence. And the blackmail is the idea that this movement, which began philosophically many years ago, but in practice in 2005, basically reaches out to companies such as Reebok. A short while ago, Reebok wanted to uh, produce a sneaker that celebrated Israel's 68th anniversary, the Israel Day of Independence, which took place about a week ago. And they got many messages from the electronic intif intifada and from BDS agents across the uh, world, and they're forced to rescind it, not only rescind it, but to disavow the fact that they are engaged in any way, shape, or form in any politicized message, which includes the recognition of Israel as an independent state. Reebok has, in fact, made sneakers that celebrate Germany, the United States, and Britain, but it was clearly under pressure and was celebrated by the activists of the BDS that this was a victory for them, that if in fact they were to go ahead and celebrate Israel, it would mean there'd be a boycott. So to my mind, it's not a boycott, it really is blackmail. The idea of deed, dishonesty, well, if you read through the materials, as uh, Legislator Capel mentioned, and it's voluminous in terms of what they allege and what they do, it really is not based upon a human rights movement, which they, can, which, they can, which they allege it is, but rather, if you read, there's many, many violations of human rights that they themselves tolerate, and it really is a, a veiled attempt at masking anti-Semitism. And finally, the idea of silence. We all know that evil will continue to grow and flourish if good people remain silent. And I really have to applaud all the efforts of our noble legislators today, and hopefully this will inspire many other legislators' body across the country. We know that this is the beginning, but hopefully we'll take the lead. And hundreds of other county legislatures and towns, and now some states are doing it, six states are doing it, are coming out directly against BDS. And I can tell you directly, my parents were Holocaust survivors that went through Auschwitz and Treblinka and the worst to the worst. Unfortunately, there was no one to speak up at that time. So today, we are taking the lead. It's our obligation as good people, men, women, Democrats, Republicans, across the board to speak out against this insidious threat to democracy because that's really what it is. So thank you for your efforts and it's a pleasure and honor to be here. God bless America. Thank you. Um, Andy Bader, who's uh, at the Men's Club of the Plainview Jewish Center. Mr. Bader. Thank you. Israel is America's staunchest ally in the Middle East. We rely on Israel for intelligence. We rely on Israel uh, as our only staunch friend in that region, that troubled region. I just want to thank the legislators for 
pu pushing this the legislation, passing this legislation. And uh, we know that the BDS movement is really an anti-Semitic movement. So I'm glad to see that we are uh, standing up to this movement and we're going to fight against this movement. So I just want to thank you all for this bipartisan legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We've got just a few more. Uh, Rabbi Klein of the uh, Merrick Drew Center. Thank you, Legislator Patel. I'd like to, to thank Presiding Officer Norma Gonzalez as well, and, and you, Howard Grappell, County Executive Ed Mangano, and my own great legislator, Steve Rhodes, and all the legislators, members of the legislature, who have joined together on behalf of this legislation. I must tell you that today is a day that I feel a great sense of pride in Nassau County. There are many counties in this country where it would be absolutely impossible to have legislation of this nature passed, let alone unanimously. That speaks for the support and the dedication and the very mindful consideration of this important legislation because today places Nassau County on the right side of history. You can't be wishy-washy about BDS. It is at its core anti-Semitic. Why do I say that? If you give Russia and China and the North Koreans, and the Iranians, and the Saudis, and the Syrians, and I must have left a few countries out along the way, if you give them a pass, and you don't boycott, sanction, and delegitimize those nations, and you only target Israel, that speaks of a unique hatred for that state, and that is what we call anti-Semitism. My friends, this places Nassau County on the side of those who are absolutely opposed to BDS. Because we know, we know there are no good intentions for those who support BDS. There is one intention, and that is the annihilation, the destruction of the state of Israel, ultimately. It says in, in our Torah, in the five books of Moses, there's a Hebrew admonition, al Kitalem, which means you can't turn your eyes away. You can't ignore what's happening right in front of your eyes. You can't hide from it. And today, the legislature says through these actions of passing this bill that they are not hiding, they're not turning away. They are responding to the 21st century form of anti-Semitism, responding powerfully, and for that we are proud and we are grateful. Thank you. We've got Rabbi Andrew Feet of uh, the East Meadow Jewish Center. Thank you, Mr. Propel. I too want to add my voice to those of us seeing the praises of Presiding Officer Norma Gonzalez of the Nassau County Legislature. I must add that uh, Norma is my legislator and I am so proud of her today. I want to thank Mr. Propel and all 19 I don't, members. I don't get a kiss. You don't get a kiss. Sorry, sorry. Not in front of cameras, anyway. <laughs> I want to thank the Democrats and Republicans, all 19, for really, really setting a trend here in this county that the rest of the country should emulate. I want to thank County Executive Mangano for overseeing this as well and promising to sign this legislation as soon as possible. As Rabbi Klein and the other speakers have mentioned, 
it is patently clear that the BDS movement is at its heart anti-Semitic. Just look a few miles northeast of Israel. Look what's happening in Syria. Over 100,000 of its citizens murdered. Millions of people forced from their homes. But have any of us heard of a BDS movement against Syria? Absolutely not. Only against Israel. The only true democracy in the Middle East. The United States' greatest ally in that part of the country. But this BDS movement is false at its core for another reason. All of us hope and pray for peace in the Middle East. The BDS movement is perhaps one of the greatest obstacles to peace. All of us here today, and all of you, and I hope you'll mention this to your readers, if any of us have gone, or any of your readers will go to Israel, the moment they step into their hotel, they will see Arabs and Jews working together. Arabs from both sides of the so-called Green Line. The moment they get on a bus, the moment they get on the Jerusalem light rail, they will see Arabs and Jews sitting together. If they go to the restaurant, they go to stores, they'll see Arabs and Jews shopping and eating together even. If, God forbid, they have to go to the hospital, they will see Arab and Jewish nurses working together side by side, Arab and Jewish doctors working together side by side. If the paradigm of the soda stream, as Mr. Kapal mentioned, is any indication, this BDS movement will only create more and more barriers between Jews and Arabs. And I ask you, isn't the only path to peace if Jews and Arabs relate to each other, work together, are side by side going about their daily activities? That is just one other reason why this BDS movement at its heart is patently false. And I hope and pray that other jurisdictions here in this country will follow the exemplary lead of Nassau County and pass similar anti-BDS legislation. Thank you. Okay, now, I didn't mention the Mr. Avi uh, Posnick of uh, Stand With Us. And I thank him for being here. I thank all of you for being here. Uh, at 1 o'clock uh, is the scheduled start of the legislative session. And at that time, uh, anyone who hasn't spoken who wishes to speak is welcome to join us. You can either do it uh, at the uh, uh, free comment period which precedes the session or uh, at the time that the actual legislation is introduced. Uh, once again, thank you all for coming here, and uh, we're done. Questions? Questions? They currently employ is involved in this movement. One, and then the second is the press release indicates that a vendor could be held civilly liable for increased cost to the county resulting from the boycott. So, if you just explain that. Okay. The the first one, the answer is we do not uh, have any knowledge because we've never checked before. So there may very well be, but we just don't know. Uh, and uh, and as to uh, as to the second, uh, I mentioned that boycotts boycotts can have real economic consequences uh, to the county, among other among other things. Now, should there develop any evidence that uh, someone who has complied with the boycott and has nonetheless succeeded in doing work for the county? That can cause harm, and uh, the county is able to uh, to go back and uh, and to vindicate its, its legislation and its rights. So you're saying that the county could sue a vendor if they lied on the disclosure form? Correct. All right. So one is um, the proponents of BDS say that uh, that it's to address. Um, or violations of the rights of Palestinians. Where does the county stand on that? It's not the county's job generally to uh, to address that kind of thing, to address foreign policy. But I will say that, again, speaking now, I'm speaking personally, I'm happy to, uh, to speak to that at any time, but just generally, one of the things that I mentioned uh, in my, early in my remarks was 
in the case of that, so to speak, where uh, there was equal opportunity, equal pay, equal rights for West Bank Arabs and, and Jews. Now, when you destroy that, you're creating additional hatred. You're not helping anybody. The way to help people is to bring them together and to work together. Uh, the, the way to uh, create additional hatred is to, is to stir up, stir the pot in that regard. And uh, as I say, as to whether there's oppression or not oppression, people can argue about that endlessly. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, obviously stand in the same spot as they do, but if you go ahead and you look at the founding principles of BDS, and if you look at the uh, at their uh, at their leaders, what you're going to see is that uh, that is just nothing but a uh, a shell. It's just a, a a way for them to claim that they're doing the right thing, that they're trying to to help people. And uh, it, as a matter of fact, those people are demonstrable uh, anti-Semites, and they're demonstrably looking and trying actively to destroy the state of Israel. So that's, that's you might, they might have more credibility if they weren't behaving that way. And finally, BDS is not merely aimed at uh, products in the so-called occupied territories. It's aimed at all Israeli products and at the state overall. So when you have uh, a boycott of professors at Tel Aviv University, and I don't think anyone claims Tel Aviv University is a disputed area, except for people of BDS, when you have a boycott of, of uh, people at Tel Aviv University from participating in international conferences uh, under the guise of, of helping Palestinians, I think that exposes uh, some of what they're doing. Uh, on that point um, of anti-Semitism, several prominent Jewish-led groups like Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, Rabbis for Human Rights, have supported BDS. How do you, how do you explain that? I don't want to explain them. I think that there are people all over who are going to, uh, uh, well, first of all, I will use the word self-haters uh, because there are such people. They're trying to fit in. They're trying to show how liberal they are, perhaps, or how uh, advanced they are in terms of uh, uh, what they're espousing. But uh, I, I don't believe we have to, uh, to respond to people like that. I think those people will be grouped in the rest of the BDS movement and are therefore subject to the same uh, arguments that we're using for them. Anyone else? We're done? We're done. Thank you, everybody. Good.